My name is Connor Quinlan, and right now I'm going to be doing something a little different in my reviews. I'm actually going to be showing how to shoot lightning storms. I live in Tucson, Arizona, and the lightning storms get pretty intense around here. So I'm going out into the desert, a little further away from my house, not too far away, to take some pictures of a distant lightning storm. And I'm also going to be showing techniques on how to be taking pictures of the lightning storm along with camera equipment as well. So, let's go. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about with uh, taking pictures of storms is about the equipment you want to use. The first piece of equipment I got here is my tripod. Tripods are very expensive important for taking pictures of storms of course because you need a long exposure to capture that lightning when it flashes. You can't capture lightning in a single shot. You have to take one long exposure of about a hundred seconds or so depending on how dark it is and how often the lightning strikes. So a tripod is a definite, uh, definitely something you need if you're taking pictures of lightning storms. When it comes to taking pictures of lightning storms, most any camera will work. Any camera that can expose for a long time, over 30 seconds or so, um, most compact cameras don't have the feature bulb like um, DSLRs do. And what bulb does is it allows the photographer to take a picture as long as they want, whether it's 30 seconds, 100 seconds, or you know, 500 seconds. Most compact cameras can't do this, so it's a better idea to use a digital SLR with weather sealing. Right here I have the D300, and it's resistant to rain and dust and things like that, so that if you get rain on the camera, you don't have to worry about it seeping through to the electronics. When it starts to sprinkle and rain like this, it's always best to get a plastic bag to put over your camera so that it doesn't get too wet. Once you have a bag on the camera, you're pretty much good in terms of um, get, keeping rain out of the camera. But as you can see with the bag in front, you can't really take a picture. So what you're going to have to do is lift the bag over like this so it's just covering the top of the lens and then now you can take a picture but the rest of your camera is covered. Now finally the last type of equipment that you're going to need to be able to take a storm picture of course is a lens and for storms I prefer to use medium telephoto or um, stronger telephoto lenses. In fact the best lenses are super zoom lenses. Now for Nikon the best lens to get for lightning photography I believe is the 18 to 200 millimeter VR lens. It allows you to have a very broad range you can take pictures all the way from 200 millimeter all the way back to 18 millimeter so you don't have to take bags lenses out of your camera and uncover your camera and get it wet you can keep all your stuff dry while also having a super zoom range now I'm going to talk about the settings that I set my camera to when I'm taking pictures of lightning first thing I'm going to talk about is shutter speed and the settings I use for that first I'm going to hit the mode button here on the D300 I'm going to set it to manual right here as you can see here, I've got it set to bulb, which allows you to press down the shutter, open up the shutter as you can hear right there, and you can, as long as you're holding it down, the shutter will stay open. And then when you take your finger off the button, it closes. And this is a very useful feature when you're taking pictures of lightning. The reason I like to use bulb is because when you're taking pictures of lightning, most of the time you have to expose for many, many seconds, and we're talking well over 30 seconds, sometimes to 150, 200 seconds long to get that lightning strike in. The next thing I'm going to talk about is what I set my f-stop to. Now right now it's st set to f-stop 8, but that's a little bit too small for my taste when taking pictures of lightning. I usually set it to 5.6 or lower, like f-stop 4 or so. The reason I take my pictures of lightning at f-stop 5.6 is because when I'm doing that, the lightning in the picture is bold and extremely bright, and this is definitely something you want when you're taking pictures of lightning. Whereas if you set it to something like f-stop 8 or f-stop 11, you're usually going to get a pretty weak lightning, lightning bolt in the picture. It's going to be thin and not very bright and not very interesting. Now I'm going to talk about white balance, and when I choose my white balance, I usually choose fluorescent which is this symbol right here and what the fluorescent does is it brings out the purples and blues around the lightning strike and makes a really nice picture I also use the cloudy mode as well which um, makes the lightning blood red and makes basically the clouds and everything around it red and it's also a very neat feature to use now when you're taking pictures of lightning you usually never want to use um, the white balance setting auto 
because what that does is it really gives you dull color and it's not a very good setting for lightning. The next thing you want to do is you want to put your camera completely in manual mode, which means you don't want any autofocus at all. Because remember, you're going to be taking these pictures during the night, so you're not going to be able to autofocus anyway. The way you put it on manual is you switch this little lever over to here, or on the D300, you can just flip this all the way back like this to get manual focus as well. Finally, manually focus your camera and set it to infinity. about you I think about love